we will be recording the session this morning, saving the chat box. So please, if you haven't, drop your name there for us. We've got two really wonderful speakers lined up, both Mary Sketch Bryant and Eric Benfeld, really a catalyst for our soul health work in Virginia. I'm gonna give it just another minute, Mary and Eric. I've got some folks still coming in from the weight room. I know we're gonna start in just a moment, but expect numbers to still continue to, to trend up after we get started. We had over 60 registered for today's session. We'll, we'll be recording it for those of you who wanna turn back to your district and ask them to review it at a later time. We'll put it up on our YouTube page and this will become part of our resource library too. This is really though the start of a hopefully really productive, engaging, exciting conversation around soil health. While a lot of work has been happening on the coalition side of which I serve on the steering committee, we really wanna ensure we're bringing districts into the loop and making you aware of the coalition's work for the soil awareness initiative and how we can really fold those efforts into helping soil and water districts. Thank you for those dropping your name in the chat box. Also really helpful, Trisha, I appreciate it. you got multiple folks sitting there in front of the camera with you. Great to know that. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our two speakers, but recognize the weight room is still continuously popping through and appreciate staff that are monitoring and bringing folks into the session. We're gonna go ahead and get started since I know we've got about an hour blocked for this. Again, we're recording this session. We'll put it up on our YouTube page. We'll follow up to all those registered with a link to it as a resource. So hopefully you can share it even more broadly. Uh, make sure you've dropped your name and your district or organization in the chat box. So our two speakers know a bit about of our cross section of folks. Thank you, Allison. Going through my spiel one more time while I see the wait room slow. I know we're over 40 folks now in the event, but we'll keep on keeping an eye on that. I am Kendall Tyree. I'm the executive director of the association. I hope I know most of you really love working with soil and water districts. Y'all are passionate about this work and our staff really likes to think of ourselves as an extension of your local district office. On the line, you have myself at the association, you have Maura Christian, our education and training coordinator. Many of you may have known her when she was in the role as our VCAP assistant coordinator. And we also have Darby Reed, our new VCAP assistant coordinator on the line. So our whole team's here to really learn about soil health, to help support districts, to answer your questions, uh, introduce our speakers, and really help do some follow-up after the fact as you continue to think of ways that we can build the For the Soil message into district work. I at this time, turn it over to our first speaker, Mary Sketch Bryant, who is the coordinator for the Soil Health Coalition, and I have really enjoyed working with over the last year. I serve as a member on the Soil Health Coalition Steering Committee, and her leadership and guidance in this work has really been phenomenal to bring partners together, talking in a venue that we haven't always been doing so. So it has really brought us uh, rallied around soil health work at a level that hasn't happened previously. She's going to share some information about the coalition's work, and then her and Eric and Felt from Extension will really talk about the For the Soil Awareness Initiative. Thrilled to have both of them. And then the three of us will help facilitate some engaging conversation of how we can fold this into district work further. So Mary, at that, thank you so much for coming to join us today. Thank you, Kendall. And it has been so wonderful working with Kendall on the steering committee and through the coalition. and. Um, really have been excited for this session for a while to think through ways that we can continue to collaborate with the districts and support your wonderful mission and work. Um, you know, I think that's such the purpose of the coalition, but I'll go into that a little more here and don't want to talk too long about the coalition and want to really, you know, dig into this for the soil initiative, but um, let me share my screen because I do have a few, do have a few slides. Let's see here. All right, hopefully you're seeing that. Um, so just some quick background on the coalition um, before moving forward. It was started by NRCS in 2013 with the leadership of Chris Lawrence really centered on the four principles of soil health. 
and increasing communication, coordination, and funding around soil health. While it wasn't formal, a lot was done and it really provided the foundation of many of the strong partnerships that exist today and really invested a lot of money in this partnership-based approach to soil health. In 2019, many of the original coalition partners came together to think through what is this next stage of the coalition? You know, How do we take this foundation of all the great work that has been happening for soil health across the Commonwealth, including all of the great work that the districts have been doing for decades, um, and also harness this new momentum. You know, I'm sure you all are seeing this. There's, there's new energy in the soil health space, but there's also so much great work that has been happening. So, you know, how do we bring these new stakeholders into the fold, but also provide that education, awareness, and knowledge uh, sharing? So a group applied for a grant for the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation with cost share from the Agua Fund, DCR, and a private donor to really kind of get the coalition up and running in a more formal way and bring more partners into the fold. So over the last 10 months, we've really been working to think through what is this new phase of the coalition? And you'll see here our vision and mission and vision language. Um, we envision a thriving and diverse agricultural landscape in Virginia that is profitable, sustainable, and resilient now and for future generations. And to do that, we facilitate communication and collaboration among partners across the Commonwealth to support farmers, leverage resources, and advance strategies that increase soil health and the understanding of its many co-benefits. So these are the core objectives. Um, oh, and yes, just, you know, really so much of the coalition is how do we harness this power of partnerships, of working together, you know, communication, communication, communication. Um, and leveraging the work that is already done um, across Virginia. So these are the core objectives of the coalition, but there's really been a heavy focus over this last year as we're kind of thinking through, you know, what do we do? What is next on these first two of really increasing communication and increasing shared knowledge around soil health, um, as well as that outreach and education and bringing those partners into the fold. So to fulfill these objectives, it takes a broad network and this kind of all hands on deck kind of approach. So while I may be the coordinator of the coalition, it's really just, you know, my work is to connect the dots and to think through how we can work together, draw those connections. Um, and it's really the partners that are thinking about what needs to be done and doing that work on the ground and thinking about the opportunities and coordinating better. So we do invite any organization in support of our vision, mission, and common ground language to share their logo with me, to share on the coalition page and um, among our partners. You know, we take this loose network-based approach where we want everyone to have a seat at the table who is doing this great work around Virginia. Um, and the association is, as Kendall said, a core partner on the steering committee, but we also invite individual districts. You can see on here, um, Thomas Jefferson, Soil and Water Conservation District has shared their logo. And so, you know, we invite all of your districts to, to do the same. So what are we up to? Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's a big focus on communication. We recognize that there is so much happening around soil health in Virginia from research to implementation and technical assistance to education to policy. So instead of just adding to what is happening, you know, how can we align that work better and align those arrows of what we're doing to leverage that impact? Um, so we have quarterly open meetings that are an opportunity to hear from partners on soil health activities and various topics. And actually our next upcoming one is just in about a month on March 14th. And um, I'll put that link in a second in the chat. Would love to have all of you join that. Um, it is an opportunity to hear what's happening around Virginia on soil health, but also to really have some um, interaction and you know hear how can we do, what can we do more? What are the opportunities and needs? What fundraising, what funding opportunities are out there that we can coordinate around? Um, and that will actually be a big focus of this upcoming meeting. We'll have um, Badishi Bhattacharya, who's a senior policy advisor at USDA, um, talking about opportunities under USDA for funding and um, partnership. Um, as well as there will be an update on General Assembly session in Virginia. Um, what does is, what is the budget look like? How, what implications are there for soil health um, and a chance for conversation? So I um, encourage all of you to join that and we'll put a link to register in the chat. Um, but, you know, 
We also, another piece of the puzzle is this farmer to farmer mentoring um, that is being led by a few different groups, Virginia Forage and Grassland Council, Virginia No-Till Alliance, um, the Eastern Shore um, Station of Agriculture Research and Education Center um, out of Virginia Tech. And Becky Sarzinski is coordinating that work, but I think, you know, on a broader level, yes, farmer to farmer and peer to peer mentoring, but also how can we as a coalition foster more mentoring among partners? You know, there's so much great knowledge among these networks um, and share that and also, you know, use that to help leverage work that's happening on the ground. Um, and the For the Soil Awareness Initiative, I'm not going to talk about much here because I just really want to, you know, turn it over to Eric to talk about that and then move that into the brainstorming conversation. Um, but just, you know, want to highlight again that communication, 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 which seems like a simple ask, but I think, you know, it can really help take all of our organizations to that next level and advancing, advancing soil health and working together. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now and want to turn it over to my colleague at Extension, Eric Benfeld, to introduce himself and then share more about the For the Soil Awareness Initiative, which is a initiative of the coalition and is, you know, co-owned by all of us and just this opportunity for education and outreach. So I'll turn it over to you, Eric, and just, yeah, let me know when you need me to, to move the slides to. Uh, th thank you more, um, Mary. And, uh really want to thank Kendall and the association for the invitation to talk with you this morning. As uh, Kendall shared, I'm Eric Benfelt with Virginia Cooperative Extension and Virginia Tech. Uh, I'm based in Harrisonburg, but work on community viability, community food systems issues, and actually served on the board for the Shenandoah Valley Soil and Water Conservation District for about five years from 2000 to 2005 and really appreciated that time and really uh, the work that Megan and others at the district level are doing. I just see how important that is. And in talking about for the soil, just a little bit of background with that. Uh, I studied soil science at Virginia Tech, both in an agronomic sense as well as forestry. And I think sometimes that we can get pretty technical in how we talk about soil and we, conservation practices. And with this effort, we've actually tried to step back a little bit and how can we um, talk about soil health in more of a distilled version. And um, as Mary was talking about the coalition, thinking that a coalition really is a group of organizations that have overlapping missions. They're you know, in the ideal situation, they're not competitive missions, but overlapping missions. And I think, you know, improving soil health, improving uh, the quality of local waterways is so important. And and specifically keeping soil in place. This slide, you know, I, you know, certainly with the soil being a critical and finite resource, you know, thinking about how do we care for the current generation as well as future generations. And then also, you know, certainly the phase three watershed implementation plan is, uh, you know, as they, they work to try to achieve those different goals for nutrient and sediment reductions. But then also soil is really at the nexus of food, energy, and water. And thinking about this presentation this morning, I also think that, you know, if you think about all the essential nutrients that you need or take in with your breakfast, lunch, or dinner, uh, probably 95% of those nutrients come from the soil. So it's also at the nexus of our physical bodies and our well being. But then also, I think it can be a lens for seen and unseen connections. You know, more and more research going into all that we don't know about uh, the soil, the soil fungi, the mycorrhizae. And also uh, just the connections 
as human beings, as well as our connection to ecology and soil and water resources. But, you know, within extension, but I also think within the soil and water conservation district, it's, it's a way to reinforce many of the outreach and educational programming efforts that, you know, you are working at as well as extension. And um, it, it can also be a bridge and a doorway for more con uh, conversations around soil. And I was talking with Kendall yesterday that, you know, you know, how do we direct people that come in and want to learn more about soil health and the for the soil awareness initiative? And then how, you know, if they express interest, how can we direct them to soil and water conservation districts, Department of Conservation and Recreation, if they need their uh, resources from DCR or uh, an USDA service office or an extension office. So um, I think it can serve that function, but then also how do we find uh, common ground for the common good? Certainly that's uh, tough during these times, but I think we all can be for the soil. And uh, Mary had shared a one of her slides with all the logos from the different organizations. If you go back to that, the two logos that actually have soil in their names are from the association and uh, Thomas Jefferson Conservation District. So that's really a reason why Mary and I are talking to you because it's so apparent that you are for the soil. didn't want to duplicate efforts in coming up with this uh, for the soil initiative and sort of campaign. Uh, Mary shared the history of how the coalition was formed and um, our partners and friends with Virginia and RCS, they really worked at distilling down the message around soil health down to 12 words keep soil covered, minimize soil disturbance, maximize living roots and energize with diversity. And this for the soil is a way that you can actually personalize and humanize that message. And you see you know, some of the badges that have been created, you know, at a personal level, I am for the soil at an organizational level that we are for the soil. And, um, you know, so it is an idea of trying to get uh, out in front of people. And then, uh, you know, at, at a deeper level, I really think that how we care for land, soil, and water is really an ex expression of our overall values and ethics and who we are as, as people and individuals. And one thing that we continue to look at is, you know, how can we make it a win-win-win situation you know, for, for farmers that are doing all that they can from a conservation perspective, um, achieving a soil conservation and water quality goals, but then also um, educating the broader general public on why it is so important to take care of soil. And that, so that's another aspect that we're hoping to move towards and thinking about branding or co-branding so it can be a win-win win relationship in the marketplace. Next slide, Mary. And with it, within that, uh, probably over almost a two-year period, you know, you see the imagery that we've come up with as an awareness initiative, and we've trying to raise awareness on social media, also with farmer outreach at field days and conferences, uh, most recently with Virginia Forage and Grassland Council and Virginia Association for Biological Farming. But then we've also developed a series of podcasts in collaboration with Jeff Ishii of On the Farm Radio. And then uh, some of the national and world soil day, soil health day, 
celebrations and we have a weekly work group call that anyone on this uh, in this training that would like to participate would be welcome to participate in that. Those calls are Wednesdays at two o'clock. And, uh, and you see some of the other resources and examples of uh, both fact sheets, um, an infographic yard sign. We thank Allison Cruz for sharing that and uh, just many ways that it, this message can, the core message can be uh, distilled down to for the soil, but then um, the different taglines of for the future, for the Bay or for Virginia is some that we've built on. Thank you, Mary. Next slide. And we're also you know, just trying to um, ask people to take a pledge to learn what people are doing, on, whether it's in their backyard or on their lawn or on their farm or in their you know, pasture or grasslands. And on, a for, on the For the Soil website, there's a place where that you can take the pledge. And some people ask, like, you know, why take the pledge? It's one way that you can sort of be a spokesperson or ambassador for the soil and sharing with Kendall that, you know, through this uh, pledge site, I was able to, to put both extension and some soil and water conservation district personnel in contact with a woman down in the Powhatan Goochland area who wanted some training on soil science. So, uh, we're continuing to work at that. And um, Mary, I can turn it over to you if you want to talk about the partner directory. Thanks, Eric. And, and yes, just, you know, as, as Eric was talking, I was thinking about how key of an educational role the districts play and that you are such a hub and source of where, you know, partners go, both urban and rural. Um, and so just, yeah, look forward to thinking through ways that uh, we can collaborate and, and be helpful in that mission. So, um, you know, thinking about signing the pledge and kind of what does that mean is, you know, one one effort that actually um, Kaylee Heather, who is a um, has been working with Eric and I, um, she's a senior at Virginia Tech. Is you know, how can we highlight more what is what farmers are doing, um, what our partners are doing. Um, to be for the soil and really leverage that to share examples of what's happening on the ground um, and kind of, you know, make that push and pull, pull a reality. And one way is through this uh, soil health partner directory um, that, that highlights what some farmers across Virginia are doing. And so, you know, after farmers have taken the pledge and partners, um, Kaylee has reached out with this Google form to, to share information of what practices they're doing and how they're being innovative. Um, but the exact same goes for our partners. You know, what is your district doing? Um, why, why do you care about the soil? Um, and it's, you know, a great way. I think such a piece of the For the Soil Initiative is that storytelling and finding where those values intersect with um, soil health and care for the land. So um, I will also put a link to this uh, Google form in the chat. Um, and to the current kind of soft launch of the directory where you can see a few examples of what's up there, um, but would encourage any of you to share with farmers you work with and submit yourself as well. Um, and just, you know, uh, both of our, I think it's been put in the chat as well, the For the Soil and Virginia Soil Health website, but feel free and reach out to Eric or myself. Um, and with any thoughts, ideas, and again, we'd welcome anyone to join those 2 p.m. weekly calls um, and you know, how we can enhance the initiative and make, make it as collaborative as possible. Um, and just another plug for that March 14th meeting, um, working on getting a draft agenda for that out, but um, I think Kendall put the registration link in the chat. So i um, excited to see some of you there. And Mary, I just had one last one last thought before the discussion too. I, I know both probably from extension as well as whether the other organizations, the district level, you know, we're always interested in impacts. And um, you know, in 2017, Virginia's the market value of agricultural products at the farm gate was close to four billion dollars. And you know, the state, you know, periodically prints that the subsequent 
economic impact of agriculture and forestry. Currently, it's like $91 billion and going up. And the question you have to ask is how much of that is possible without soil? And so I think, again, trying to make some of those connections of uh, how important it is to agricultural productivity, forestry productivity, but then also economic vitality. Definitely. Thank you, Eric. Um, and so now I want to kind of transition into something a little more. Um, Mary, before you yeah, push yeah. into Jamboard, uh, you've got a question. Can you share the campaign's mission again? Yeah, Eric, do you, do you want to touch on that some and I can add anything? Sure. Um, and if you go back to the, that one slide about the for the soil awareness initiative. I tried to, again, you know, how do we amplify and complement ongoing soil health messaging and educational thrust and priorities without um, trying to avoid as much duplication as possible? You know, how do we personalize and humanize and possibly popularize for the soil? And, you know, one aspect that we've done is, again, trying to put a face to, to what people are doing and getting people to be spokespeople or ambassadors for soil and then uh, refreshing and reinforcing the four core soil health principles that uh, Virginia USDA NRCS has been promoting. And, uh, you know, they were to distill that down to to 12 words and, you know, continuing to write blog posts or other information about what that means on individual farms and operations. Uh, overall, also trying to raise general awareness of soil as a critical resource within the farming community, but then also the broader uh, general public. And, you know, how can we help people get involved so they personally, as well as organizationally, see care for the land and soil as, as, as an expression of their values and ethics and who they are. And I'm looking at different ways to socially market, but then also we've had some discussion with uh, Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services about possibly co-branding. And then we've also worked out or talked and discussed with a couple of different uh, local and regional food hubs uh, to ways to maybe put a badge or brand for the soil. But it's, it's really just, it, it, overall, it's an idea and trying to get people first to care for the soil, then at a deeper level, look at the four principles and you know, overall, hope, hopefully have a deeper appreciation for such a critical resource and feel like they can do their own part in taking care of the soil. Eric, and the only piece I'll add to is, you know, is yet yeah, kind of that what, what Eric touched on is kind of twofold is how do we share and lift up what is happening and what uh, farmers are doing on the ground, how partners are caring for the soil. And then also with tied to that is, you know, using that as an educational and outreach thrust to general public, to, um, to others who and pull them into to care for the soil. Um, and the only thing is, I will add is that, you know, and I mentioned this, what I mean is that this initiative is really owned by everyone. And I think it's, you know, it's a tool that in a approach that we want everyone to use in the way that works, works for you, for, for your district. Um, but you can, if you go to the For the Soil site, there should be a way there. And I think it actually comes as a pop-up to download any of the badges or any of the images. And I would also say, if you have, you know, farmers that you're working with in your district or um, partners who are doing great work for the soil and you want them featured, send their pictures to us or write, we can post a blog post um, with their story. Um, so opportunities there on that kind of leveraging and lifting upside. And Mary, the, just one lastly, I think is, uh, you know, if you look at that fourth principle, energize with diversity, 
you know, people will ask me, well, what does that mean? You know, you talk about uh, crop rotations, uh, multi-cover, multi-species cover crops. You also emphasize the importance of integrating livestock into the landscape. But, th but then I also think at a you know, personal and organizational level, you know, the diversity of the different organizations on the coalition bring different skill sets, different capacities. And it's a, again, it's a way to you know, amplify and hopefully achieve the missions that we, we have in uh, protecting natural resources, conserving natural resources, and improving the quality of life for today and tomorrow. Thanks, Eric. Um, Kendall, anything that you want to add before we jump into the more interactive side? No, I appreciate y'all giving such a great overview of the, for the soil and the coalition's work. And I think we've addressed all the questions in the chat box. Okay, so I am going to switch my shared screen and I just dropped into the chat a link. Um, if you have access, um, if you, uh, if you're calling in from your computer, you can hit that link and it's uh, we'll send you to Jamboard, which is kind of like Google Docs. It's another Google platform, kind of their interactive whiteboard. So we're going to see how this how this works today. So um, test it out with all of you as a way to hear from you on, um, you know, how we can collaborate more and, and support the mission of the districts and work together. Um, and if you can't access that, I will also put those questions in the chat and feel free and just throw any thoughts or comments in the chat or speak up too. I want this, you know, to be a conversation. So um, wanted to offer lots of opportunities um, for uh, interaction for whatever works best for you. Um, so just if you are in the Jamboard where I'm seeing, yeah, we got some folks in there. Um, let me actually, yeah, share my screen now. <laughs> da, da, da. Okay, hopefully folks are seeing that. Um, how this will work is you can see at the top there, there's there's a question that we're gonna have discuss and we'd love to hear from all of you on. And you can add a sticky note. Um, so you can see here, what are opportunities for collaboration with For the Soil to help meet the mission of the districts and to work with you. Um, and so if I wanna put in here yard signs um, and you can put your name with it um, or not, you can add in, I could add in Mary and then just plop it on here like a sticky note on a whiteboard. Um, you could also just add some text um, in here. And though know, I'm struggling to a ghost. Um, but you know, we can get, get more specific than those are just a couple examples. Um, and I'm gonna take mine off of there. But would love to give everyone a few minutes um, to just put some thoughts on, you know, after you know hearing this, what opportunities there are, what you're thinking about, and we'll have it. We have a few more questions to go through, um, but also feel free and drop that in the chat um, or raise your hand, and we'd love to hear from you. Even you know if you're putting a sticky note on the Jamboard, but want to elaborate on that more. Um, yeah, just. Excited to, to hear your thoughts. Okay, seeing a few things come in. Connecting via landowners that soil water conservation districts connect with through cost share programs, VACs and VCAP. I, I love that. I think, you know, the, the districts play such a key role in connecting um, between landowners and partners and you know I think what are the opportunities for sharing the the for the soil and soil health message um, through that and if whoever shared that has you know some more specific thoughts on connecting um, feel free and speak up on here or um, add some more details farm days and district newsletters and I'm also seeing farm field days in the chat and that's actually you know an idea that I've heard more of um, was had a meeting with uh, about 10 farmers last week and they said, Let, we want more demonstration days. We want more field days. So, um, you know, how can we use, see what's happening on the ground and tie that to the four principles. That's great. 
bookmarks, stickers, coloring pages to give out when we visit schools. I love that. I think the edu the student education is such a huge piece and would love to work with you to think through more of how can we how can we reach more students and I know the association and the districts play such a role in environmental education so talk to community groups yes Bill that's great and I would love to hear if you have some thoughts on specific community groups that we could connect with and share materials with or if there's certain materials that we could develop together to share um, Native plant symposiums. Yeah, I would love to hear more on what, what those examples are and if there's some in Virginia. Bring field trips to schools. Um, farm days and district newsletters. Um, that's, yeah, great. Do all, this could be a question for any of you or can you may know, do, do all the districts have a newsletter that they put out? Many of our districts do newsletters, postcards, some version of outreach, most definitely. Awesome. Farm field days are the communication method with producers. Yes, that's, you know, I think there's an opportunity to host more of those, you know, working with the district and the coalition to host a farm field day. would love to do that. Providing soil health to small urban suburban landowners, um, healthy lawn and garden soil. We've had a lot of interest in that urban side. And I think too, thinking to VCAP and, um, working more to get that message out um, as a urban uh, land and lawn owner myself. Um, I'm excited about that possibility. Awesome. And just all of this will be saved. And what I will do is one, now that you have this link, you, you have access to these um, thoughts and slides, but I'll also turn everything into a Word document to share back out. And I also wanna highlight that we really want to move these ideas forward and work on implementation of these, you know, like, yes, let's do a farm field day. Um, and so that, yeah, I'm excited to follow up with you all and work on implementing this. Okay. Um, for purposes of emphasizing the connection between soil health and clean water. Yes, that's, that's great. And I think you know, I know there's research out there that could be shared more. Um, we could work on, you know, getting a fact sheet or one pager with the For the Soil logo and district's logos on it to, to share out. Um, that'd be great. Okay, I'm going to move to the next question. And so if, if you're a if you're on Jamboard, if you go up here to where this arrow is and hit the next, you will also move over. Um, what other ideas do you have for soil health education outreach? And you can see that someone has already put a great idea in there. Um, but if you're still wanting to put some ideas in this one, stay there and keep dropping ideas there. Um, but would love to hear just other ideas for this soil health education outreach. And some of those came on that last side. Um, but yes, the NACD, the Association of Conservation Districts poster contest, healthy soil, healthy life theme. Um, Oh, and yes, the image. You can also drop an image. So if you go down here and hit image, if an image better reflects your uh, ideas or thoughts. Partnership between farms and schools. Great. Working with 4-H garden clubs, farmers markets. And again, welcome anyone. I don't, can't see everyone's video if there's hands raised or anything, but feel free and speak up as well. This is more Christian, the education training coordinator here. And I love the Envirothon logo and the NACD um, logo and the soil patch. We have through Envirothon, there is a soils test that the um, high school students take and they get into a soil pit. So there's definitely opportunities for us to incorporate um, these initiatives into what we kind of give to students for them to study for the test and the actual test. Oh, that's great to know, Marks. Yeah, I didn't, didn't realize about the soil testing through Envirothon. I think there really could be something there. We're um, working with some folks at Extension to also get more of a one pager that's a little more um, comprehensible and digestible than what may currently accompany soil tests that are really hard to understand. You're like, okay, I got my soil test results back. 
what the heck does this mean? Um, so maybe there's the way to, you know, work on something too that could be used with um, high schoolers. Certainly. Outreach through electric co-ops in the state. I, that's a really interesting idea because electric co-ops are such a key connection to rural communities. Um, so yeah, whoever posted that, would love to follow up on that as well. Uh, awesome. All right, I'm gonna jump to the next question, but again, same thing goes here. All right. What do you wanna learn more about soil health? What would be most helpful to you in your district? So thinking to the awareness initiative, but also just the coalition as a whole with so much of our meshes being knowledge sharing, um, providing educational resources. Um, is it training? Um, you know, is there a need for more training around soil health? What specific topics? Is it the economics of soil health? Is it um, measurement and evaluation? Is there anything that you're like, we just, we don't have a resource right now for this, but we want to learn more about it. You sure your hair is tomorrow? And I'm seeing in the chat from Deirdre Clark, that is great. So Virginia Working Landscapes, I have connected with them before and it has been on my to-do list to connect with them around the coalition. So I really appreciate that um, suggestion because I think when you're thinking about that soil, wildlife, water connection, they're doing some really great work around that and are also doing a lot of research, um, both on the social science and um, natural sciences side. And for this question too, if there's an image of a speaker you want to hear, um, I was about to say you could drop Ray Archuleta's image there, but someone put Ray, right, just put Ray Archuleta um, or soil health training. So. Teach the teacher training where the districts learn about how to talk about soil health to home and landowners. That's, that's a great idea is that train the trainer. Um, and something that the coalition has been thinking on and would love to hear, you know, thoughts from the districts on what specifically, what format would work best, you know, is virtual or it sounds like some field days. Um, is that also, you know, if we're talking train the trainer or in-person field days the way as well. Um, oh, glad there's some, yeah, appreciation of the social media sharing sharing more resources over social media so the districts can reshare through your pages. That's great. Elaine Ingham from Soil Food Web, great. Bobby White Scarver. Measurement showing the benefits of soil health and residential lawns and landscapes. That's a, that's a great idea. I'm not sure even, you know, there's, a lot of our partners in the coalition right now are doing research on the agricultural side of measuring and evaluating the benefits of soil health, but what the, um, who is doing that research on the urban and suburban side. Virginia chapter of the Nature Conservancy, yes, have connected briefly with some, some partners from the Nature Conservancy, and there is, um, someone in Maryland who's their primary agricultural partner, but I think too, thinking on that urban suburban side, um, there may be an opportunity for partnership there. David Montgomery, Oops, yeah. Awesome, some great ideas coming in here. Oh, that's great to know, Eric, the NCAT conference. We can probably, I think I just got an email about that conference, can put a link in the chat too there. VSU Soil Conference and just partnering more with VSU. That's a, that's a great recommendation. They do, I know a great, um, their field days are wonderful. Um, and so partnering more with them on some soil health field days. Yeah, the small farm outreach program there. All right, I'm gonna jump forward, but it, there's a lot of momentum here. Um, so we'll, we'll keep watching this. So this is, you know, something just to pick your brain on as such the key contacts to producers and landowners, both rural and agricultural and urban suburban. 
Um, what are opportunities to reach more producers and landowners about for the soil and soil health? And I think a lot of those ideas came out in the last few slides. So I know this may seem a little duplicative, but um, if there's any other ideas on making that connection, drop, if we're gonna drop them here, or again, put them in the chat or just, or speak up, I'm excited to hear. Yes, clean water farm winners. And I know those just came out and actually I may be reaching out to some of you who those award winners are in your district to work to you know feature them. Um, and in our partner directory on the website and the blog and then also feature the district because I know how key of a role you, you play in their work. Yes, short and sweet that are social media posts that are shareable. If there's any specific ideas, um, about you know, what some of those could look like or ways to improve what we are posting now that you would be more likely or would be more helpful for you to share. Um, just, yeah, reach out with that. And yes, thanks, Alice. And posters at cattle markets. Would love to think through more. That's a great way to reach producers. Um, farmers markets, local co-ops. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so well, health tips of the week. I, I that's I really like that. I think that could be a whole like social media initiative of its own. I'm gonna composting um, promote on farm road with composting. Yes, master gardeners and master naturalists. We've connected with master gardeners some, but master naturalist is a great idea. And, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity there, especially on that urban suburban side too. Oh, the Rappahannock Rapid and Planning Commission, local food council, Deirdre. That's a great idea. If you, yeah, had any connections there, I'm. Thinking on the name of the woman from the planning commission that I've connected with in the past there, but and yes, thank you, Allison, for mentioning Earth Month. We are working. I, I should plug that we're um, starting to plan what an Earth Week for the soil push for the whole week of Earth Day it could look like, and if for that week there's any, you know, we would love to partner with some of you on something whether it's uh, a speaker or promoting the Clean Farm Award winners that week, you know, whatever that is, um, we're gonna really try and do a big push both social, through social media, but also through events and outreach. Oh, National Earth Science Week. I had not heard of that before and it always has a soils oriented day. Uh, Maria would, would love to, yeah, hear more and connect more on that. In Chesapeake Bay Awareness Week, there's all these. The goal could be to have a, every week be something that we uh, have a holiday around. But these are great suggestions. All right. So barriers and challenges. We've been, you know, talking about a lot of these opportunities, but what are some of the barriers and challenges that you are facing, um, whether it's in reaching landowners, um, about soil health or implementing soil health um, that there may be opportunity for us to collaborate to, to work on. Um, property owners don't wanna give up their nice lawns like applying herbicides and pesticides that decrease soil microbe diversity. Been working on my dad for a while To He adores his pristine lawn. So slowly getting a few more natural plants in there. But that's a great idea, a great a barrier that, you know, love to brainstorm more how do we work work together and is there is there any push through for the coalition or for the soil that would help with that financial difficulties and lack of knowledge. Um, yeah, and Kathleen, if there's any, you know, 
thoughts or reflections you had on what, what types of knowledge? Is it, you know, knowledge of what the benefits of soil health practices could be, you know, economically or environmentally? Um, oh, Sandra, that's interesting. Golf course managers. Um, I know there's, I don't know if Virginia there's one, but um, there's some land trusts that specifically just, you know, focus on working with golf courses and there could be an educational thrust there. Or working with, yeah, Virginia Tech's turf management or HOA pushback. That's, yeah, that's a big one. Generational gaps in adoption. That is a huge, huge one. And how do we, yeah, what opportunities are there there? Several, seen HOA by several, so. Yeah, people do not understand soil biology and how it relates to plant growth. So bringing in more resources and experts to speak on that, but also, you know, getting landowners to attend that. And um, mm -hmm. showing how improved soil health benefits urban and suburban was big. Um, yeah, wanting the perfect lawn. Personally, I know our challenge with our lawn is not perfect, but having two dogs that want to tear up every bit of our lawn and trying to keep healthy soil. So maybe that's not a widespread challenge though. Staff capacity, yes, that is one that I know across the board. Um, and, you know, considering, and I didn't mention this when we were um, the coalition presentation, but there's a lot of funding opportunities coming down the pike. and you know, is there, what's the opportunity to collaborate with the districts and the association to think through where that funding can help with capacity or other barriers and challenges, so. All right. Okay, that, I guess I think I just had some blank slides on here. So that was the last question we had. Um, and there's just been so many good ideas here. And again, just want to emphasize that this is, something that we want to, we want to influence on these ideas and work with you. So um, I'll also put my contact in the chat, but, um, and we want to explore some more of this too on that coalition meeting on March 14th. So I um, would encourage you all to attend that. And um, I know it is hard to have interaction virtually. Um, it's not the same as in person, but hopefully this has sparked a little bit of that and we can um, continue working on that. and working together. Mary, I think Eric has responded now to it in the chat box, but Mr. Newton, a director in the Shenandoah Valley area and also a member of our Virginia Soil and Water Board, asked the question, what opportunities are there to develop for the soil messages to help districts to advertise cover crop practices? And I think this is exactly where we wanted you to be in this conversation of what ideas and what needs do you have? How can we help hold this message and help you in your marketing? Is it cover crop practices? Is it no-till? How do we ensure the VAX program maybe is capturing some of this for the soil message and helping you market and sell the program? So if there are ways that we can help, as Eric said, absolutely uh, glad to explore these ideas. We're gonna keep the Jamboard. I've been transferring some of them from the chat box into Jamboard for you so that we can, like Mary said, really dive into this deeper and go back to your suggestions to figure out how to move some of them forward. Thank you, Kathy, for a link. It sounds like there's a pilot program of sorts from Minnesota that you're recommending too. One, also, one other idea too, is you see innovative practices or stories, you know, please share those. I, I, Mary and I were at the VABF conference and listening to William Hale in Louisa County, he was talking about uh, some of the interseeding of cover crops that he's done on about 10 acres with, uh, with uh, popcorn. And, and I think there's different practices that could be shared. So yeah, please share and glad to lift them up as well. And I think, you know, from a coalition perspective, going to that connecting the dots pieces, as you're also seeing innovative things, you know, I think we were talking yesterday about 
the VAX program and how a lot of the innovation in that program has come directly from farmers too. And how can we as a coalition help connect some of those dots and are there other needs around cover crops and no-till? So um, just wanna put that out there. Mary, Eric, I think this has been really helpful. I've got a lot of really good tidbits to build out, not just to bring back to the steering committee and to speak with each of you about to help districts, but also for our own training efforts where we can combine. I've gotten some great suggestions for annual meeting and as we head back to in-person, as well as how we're working with DCR for some training efforts too. Bobby Whitescarver's name was one that was tossed up there and we're working with DCR to really move forward with Bobby's help on conservation selling skills and Ag 101, some of those topics. So I'm really excited to see how connected a lot of this already is and excited to figure out how we can move a lot of it forward. I'm hoping Mary, Eric, all on the line, this is just the start of a lot of conversation that we don't end here and that we are happy to have you plug into the coalition's open meetings engage one-on-one -on -one if you've come up with a really great idea and even continue to have these types of brainstorming sessions throughout the year. It's certainly, a, we pursue something as Mr. Newton suggested on cover crop, we wanna make sure we're not reinventing the wheel and some of those resources can be shared with districts statewide. We are looking at potentially a record setting cost share in July 1. So how can we help that message into things like your advertising cover crop and other practices? and not just for Shin Valley, but for district statewide. Definitely. I know we're close to the top of the hour. So Mary, Eric, others on the line, I'm, any final takeaway points that we should really leave and be energized around soil health? Just thank you all. I mean, I'm just, again, like Kendall said, I just, this is the start um, and, um, just excited for what 2022 has in store, how we can work together um, and partner um, with individual districts with across the state. So thank you. And we also have some stickers and buttons about ask, ask me or you know, whoever's wearing the button, ask me about for the soil and glad to send those on to any districts that would be interested in those. And We've also done some publishing of hats and t-shirts, but that's a, a limited basis. Eric, that's a really good point. We took some of it to the state fair, but as districts start getting out and doing booths, you're right, including that for the soil message with district work is a pretty great way to, to fold the message into it. So I think many of them heard a, swag for those type of outreach events. And I've got some comments in the chat, Piedmont, Hanover, Caroline, Taswell. So if there's potentially some help organizing that for you, please let me know, Eric, and I can help coordinate districts. If you're interested and need to come to me first, we can maybe reach out to Mary and Eric and help coordinate getting that folks to districts. And Allison made a comment in the, in the chat also, if you, I think if you go to both of the sites for the soil, if, you've, if it's the first time that you've gone to the For the Soil website, you'll get a sort of a link to an ambassador kit and, and that has a lot of the badges and other materials and uh, for use as spokesperson. So if, if you have any trouble getting to that, we're glad to share that. Awesome. And I'm trying to write down who's throwing in the chat that they, they want some, some stickers and buttons, but feel free to also just email me with any address or we can, we can work that out in case I'm missing writing you down. Mary, I'll gladly go back through the chat box. I see Southside, Piedmont, Hanover, Caroline, Taswell. Uh, if I've missed you afterwards, can pull together that list and work directly with copying y'all with Mary for how to make that happen so that you're right, not just giving away some stickers to kids, but having those buttons to wear for volunteers, uh, as Trisha said, uh, during school and field days would be a great opportunity. Definitely. And Allison, I like you repping your For the Soil mug that you've made. Right, me too. <laughs> I think that it brings it full circle for me on some of the Jamboard comments. For example, in Virathon, more on I need to talk. I 
I think we thought about the soil test, but how do we make for the soil actually a part of that station where you're, you know, seeing some of the material, you're definitely got the swag in your face a little bit there to start making the connection for those students too. Awesome. Definitely. Thank you all and thank you, Kendall. For, for yes, thank you very much. Thanks guys for joining. Please know again, this is just the start. Reach out to any of us to further the dialogue. I'll stay on a few minutes if anybody has some additional questions or wants to drop anything final in the chat box. Eric, Mary, really do appreciate the insights and continue to look forward working with you and helping move these items forward. You're welcome and thank you again for all the work that you do. Right back at you. Thank you.